Hello and welcome to Tunivision. Time to find out what you can do on an unexpanded VIC-20. Yes, I reviewed the penultimate cartridge the other week. It really is the ultimate upgrade for your VIC-20. Uh, gives you lots of RAM so you can run pretty much any game and make sure it has a whole load of built-in cartridge games as well. It's a wonderful piece of hardware to have. But what would the average VIC-20 user have been playing back in the day when they first got their VIC and had no extra RAM? Well, I've bought five cassette games, as you can hear here, on eBay. And I'm going to try them all completely at random. And the first game I'm loading is called Undermine. And uh, the aim of the game is for... All these games are Mastertronic, by the way. And I picked them because they're covers. Because uh, there's no screenshots on these games. So uh, Undermine is a game of skill and strategy. The, to the south is the open sea protected by the storm wall. To the north are the wide plains of Xylon. The object of Undermine is to break a way out to the north and the free lands, to the free lands with their... Without the anti-force drawing your hyper back to the south, destroying the storm wall, allowing the sea to rush in. Various levels of difficulty and its keyboard only. Nothing else on the inside apart from French instructions and Italian instructions with the same flag. Yeah, they put the French and the Italian flag. Oh, it could be a shading issue. Anyway, so we're loading this up in real time. The game is loading. It says it's loading. We're going to see how long a VIC-20 game takes to load. Um, that's the artwork of a build that looks like there we go and if you think it sounds a bit different today yes I'm in a different location doing Chinny Vision not in my usual place so I set this bat speed to 1 C will width for 1 to 4 1 game speed from 1 to 40 put that in it's breakout and I'm dead right so all this hyper wall and sea wall and planes of Xylon. Do you want another go? Not really, but I'm going to have to, aren't I? Right, I've not altered the speed. Oh, I can't move. Why can't I move? It's trying to. It says the cursor key. I've not got the instructions here. Just left arrow, right arrow. But there's only a. You've got to press shift to. Right. Okay. This game's written in basic, isn't it? I still can't move. I'm pressing the key. Well, I can't move. Let's try again. Right, restarting the game. Not going to play the same game. Right, let's change the bat speed and everything else and see if that changes it. Bat speed, four. Seawall width. Let's go for four there. Game speed, let's go for five. Right, off we go. I can move. I've missed the ball. So it's breakout, but you've got both sides of the wall to deal with, and the collision detection is abysmal. It's like a typing game. Am I going to win? Can I get the ball out? Do I care? I don't think you can do much in 3K, but presumably you can program a game that's actually fun. Well, I know you can, because I've typed in typing games about this size that are better than this. Oh... Uh, the controls are really unresponsive, just, just like wading through treacle. We press the key and eventually it responds. And if you get near it, you might hit it, you might not. It might go through you like it did there and just, oh, this is terrible. You might as well have bought one of those programming books where type your own gaming and done that instead of this. Come on then, we're going to complete this. Yay, we have escaped to the plains of Xylon. Woo. So loading up the next game, Bullet, which has lovely artwork on the cover. Open them up again, no screenshots. Race your hot rod sports car through the city streets. Avoid a head-on collision with the Metro Police. They've got sophisticated radio communication, so they always know where you are. Try to collect, cover every street and collect all the coins. On the second screen, you must rob the bank without setting off the alarm. It's Grand Theft Auto on the Vic. This is going to be great. This is going to be great, fantastic. Right, let's wait for it to load in. And this one does actually say on the front, unexpanded VIC-20. They must have had issues with some of the early games where it just said VIC-20 and then people bought them. I don't, and didn't know if they're going to work or not, I don't know. But some of these games I have here do say, three of them say unexpanded VIC-20 and the other two just say VIC-20. Wait for it to load up. And 
I just wonder the, what, what's the number on here? The uh, it's IV thirty three, so it's a fairly undermines IV twenty nine on the code on the side. Right, here we go. Right, got a tune. Press space to start. What are the controls? Joystick. I've got joystick. Good eye. Like a bit of joystick. The tune's not very good. Right, here we go. Right, I'm. You start moving straight away. I'm that car. No, that right. That's the. I was going clockwise, and the police car was going anti-clockwise. Right, I'm to the car going clockwise. I've moved to the inside track. Right, you've got to collect all the coins. And oh, now I've done it again. Here we go down here. Now I'm going to do it again, aren't I? Yeah, it's it's not very responsive again. Um, you've got to do it a little bit beforehand to make it jump over. So you got to get all these coins, and then. Go through the dollar signs in the middle, and there's a man's face in that bottom window. Right, down we go. Is it jump over? Oh, I thought it was going to jump over there. Well, there's a bit of jeopardy here. There is a bit of jeopardy. No, I've done it. Oh, I was so close. Game over. Let's do it again. I'm having more fun here than I was having on Undermine. Best game you could have played in 1984, really, is it? But never mind, right up there. So there's four... Oh, that's, ah, the faces are my lives. Oh, that was lucky. The faces in the windows or the boxes are my lives. That's why I only had one last time, because I had one life left. Oh, no! Oh, he's a sneaky one, that police girl. Right, dive into the inside. Gonna do, we're going to do this. We're going to rob the bank. No! I'm having fun. I, I quite like this. It's simple, but... Uh, moving on to the next game, which is Neutron Zap, and I've already loaded up this uh, pre-game loading screen. Neutron Zapper, uh, and uh, try to shoot small asteroids and the large asteroids, and basically shoot everything, and you've got joystick controls. Um, and yeah, it's a multi-load because it loads the instructions first, then you load the game. Oh, we've got a leaflet inside the cassette tape as well, which says, win a trip to Florida and see Disney World. Oh, they want original ideas for computer games. Okay, what's the closing date? 21st of February, 1985. Missed that. Right, so, use a joystick. You are cruising through space when suddenly your navigator, Marvin shots, holy tea bags with vented an asteroid built. There's not much you can do except to dodge the asteroids. Okay, right, we get the idea. Oh, and Marvin has triggered off the galactic alarm and two fleets of spacecraft are coming to exterminate you. Usual story. Shoot everything in sight. Oh, we're straight in. No, no niceties of having to press play or any, you know, press any key to start. Here we go. Right, these are these are asteroids, apparently. Oh, and they split. They split if you shoot them. Oh. Oh, dear. Right, okay. And they bounce off the side, annoyingly. As well, you've got to watch out for that rebounding. Does it get far? It does get faster as it goes on as well. I died there. Oh, you've got to be very careful. Your craft moves very smoothly, the asteroids don't. I'm um, not too bad. It's all 3K, remember? I mean, this is probably machine code. Well, it is machine code, isn't it? What? First one didn't take the bullet. You could just hang around on the side here and keep shooting. Because if you hang around on the side, the things can't bounce off and hit you. Hmm. There's gotta be a fault to this strategy. But it really is speeding up now. Ah oh, no, no, there's the fault to the strategy. You can get hit. I didn't shoot that one, it just split up by itself. It's a little bit harder. So there should be some enemy craft around at some stage. Don't know when. Because if this is it, this is pretty boring, but the instructions are something about the galactic police coming to get me. Oh, that was something there. I hit something there. But I died. That's not a space class. That's a, that's a tiny asteroid, isn't it, I think? Come on, I want something. There we go. There we go. Something's going to shoot back at me. Right, so that was Phantom Attack. Now on to King Tut. 
which I'm told is a highly recommended game, actually has screenshots in the manual. The object of the game is to search the tomb of Tut until you find out the golden mask. You find the golden mask. Gold sacred golden death mask. Press F1. Sand dance music. Outside the game, the mask can be seen at top left hand side of the screen. Joystick controls guide Archie through the corridors of doom. Collect gold on the way, but avoid the guardians. Hurry back. Uh, should you die on the way, you will go will stay buried for long time. Loading machine code. Loading machine code. Loading machine code is the phrase that indicates quality. If a game tells you it's loading machine code, then, you know, that's a quality game. It's just forward to the sound so you don't have to watch it load. But um, loading maze now. So we loaded the machine code. Perhaps the maze is not in machine code. Perhaps it's in some other language. I don't know, but it, it is definitely loading the maze. You know what's going on here. Here we go. There I am. I've got a lamp. Some jolly music. And I move and I die. Right, tough tut. Oh, <laughs> I see what you did there. Right, let's try again. I can't move. I move tiny amount and then I die. Tough tut. Try on keyboard. Try on keyboard. There's nothing happening. Why doesn't he move? He's dead. Oh. I think there's a bug in this game. <laughs> I think this game doesn't work. Um, can't move. Yeah, I've spoken to the Futures 8-bit and he said there are some versions of King Tut out there that are bugged and indeed you just die when you try and move. And that is seems to be what's happening. So sadly, King Tut is not a game and it looks fairly decent actually, especially in 3K, um, that I'm going to be able to play. On to the final game, which is Phantom Attack. Phantoms are swarming to attack you. Watch them closely as they build up their strength to explode above you. Their missiles move fast, so avoid them at all costs. Space Invaders, isn't it? To kill a phantom, you just blast it with your proton beam. The phantom will shrink and finally disappear into oblivion forever. The phantoms have many different attack configurations. I imagine most of them go left to right. I don't know. And a swarm of in search of your destruction through a hundred different levels of graphical amazement. Graphical amazement. And it's joystick only. Well... This promises much. This promises much. I did literally choose these games at random just on eBay from the covers. Um, I thought it'd be interesting. Oh, this is flashy. Mastronic presents Phantom Attack 1984. All rights reserved. We've got a tune. It's going to be multi-load. It's going to be menu and then load the game. Bet it is, because how can you do it in 5K with 3.5K free? Right. So, uh, can the game controls... Oh, this is this is migraine inducing. F1 game pause, F3 uh, wave reset, F5 game reset, F7 attack wave. For F1, any key to continue. Right, joystick control. No copying or hiring without the approval of Mastertronic. Game now loading. No, Mastertronic, look, I'm not using a priority copy. This is a real original copy of Phantom Attack. So there you go. Original game. So what's it going to be? Space Invaders are going to be... Only question is how flashy is it going to be? What? Right, lots of flashing colours. High Wave 1. Okay. Oh, this is very arcadey. Lots of colour and lots of sound. Got that Mastertronic. Attack Wave 1. Here we go, then. Oh, oh, okay. I think I've got auto on my joystick, but let's not worry about that for the moment, because this thing moves fast. So you've got these faces, which presumably the phantoms, they fall towards you. I thought it was supposed to be firing at you, but they, they fall towards you. How weird. I assume the person who programmed this was in some kind of hallucinogenics. I don't know, but yeah, I... You shoot the faces and they become... Change colour. They don't seem to die. Do you have to keep on hitting them with the bullets? And I've had some effects. I've only got one up there still coming down at me. And you can you can wrap around the screen as well. It's very smooth. 
What should I do? Should I just shoot at him like that? There we go. Right, so it takes more than one bullet to kill the baddie. Hmm, okay. That's not bad. Attack wave two. Oh, lots of faces up there ready to get me. And we're going to go, and... Here we go. Oh, no, that ended badly. They dropped down diagonally this time. Well, this game's a bit of a challenge. It's, it's not bad. I think it's that game you could spend a bit of time with. It's... I wouldn't say original. It's different. Um, yeah, you have to get quite a lot of shots into the baddies to make them disappear. I have got auto fire on. I don't know how difficult this would be without auto fire. I don't plan on finding up trying. No, oh, this isn't bad. Um, it's in the limited amount of memory we've got available. It's a fun little arcade game. Nothing special, but and nothing to particularly pick up your Vic specially for. But no, if you got if you see it in your box of cassettes over all these games, it's one I'd probably pick out. So that was a quick look at five budget Mastertronic games I picked at random on eBay for an unexpanded Vic 20. Undermine um, was pretty rubbish. Bullet I quite enjoyed actually. That was quite a fun game. Neutron Zapper, yeah, it's a fairly okay shoot 'em up. Nothing particularly special. Cross between asteroids and other games just flying through space. Again, for the memory, not too bad. King Tut looks really good but I couldn't play it, but it looks really interesting, especially in the memory. Phantom Attack is, again, another game that looks interesting. Very polished, I think. Of all the games, Phantom Attack is the one that looks the most polished. To be honest, other games really impressed me, but Phantom Attack looks had impressive presentation. The problem is with the Vic that you can't do much in the available RAM, so you're always going to be fairly limited. If you do want to play larger games um, that I've seen that we're going to look at in coming weeks on the Vic, you do need some kind of memory expansion that cartridges like the penultimate cartridge enjoy. I think it comes back to what I said on the penultimate review. If you want to turn your Vic 20 into a much more useful computer, then you're going to want some kind of expansion for it. Mm -hmm.